Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Spotlight. I am here with Nick. He's out at, all the way in California. Hi, Nick. How's it going? Hi, hi, Sydney. How are you doing? Good to see so, you. So glad to have you on the show. So Nick and I have uh, spoken on several occasions. I originally met one of his partners, Dimitri, out in a conference. Um, it's a VC conference out in Europe. So they are representing a European um, firm out there. And Nick is actively recruiting, actively working with startups down in Silicon Valley. So that is so exciting. Yeah, same. Likewise. I mean, we've been, you know, bringing companies here to the United States for a while. It's been kind of a long journey. Then we realized, okay, we need to get a house for the portfolio companies that are coming in uh, down here to the Silicon Valley. And then that's uh, how we ended up having a startup house, which is basically an incubator for uh, startups. Uh, so today it's about, uh, as I said, 10 houses here in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we also have a location in Hong Kong and right now opening a few other locations around the globe, like uh, Dominican Republic or Indonesia. So yeah, also in Europe, a couple locations like we have partners in Spain. So it's basically building a global network and ecosystem of entrepreneurs, uh, you know, being able to connect with the mentors to raise capital from the leading venture capital firms. And then we also co-invest uh, if uh, some of the top tier venture capital firms or our venture partners says, well, yeah, let's, that's a great company. Let's consider it for a potential investment. Then we would be happy to join as well. Excellent. So tell us a little bit more about your firm. Which stage do you guys invest in? What are your geography limitations? And do you guys lead or follow? Yeah, we always follow. So that's the idea. We always follow. Uh, we are good at, you know, working with the startups in terms of, you know, sourcing those startups, uh, scoring, identifying the companies that have the most potential for growth. And then we also, um, you know, good experts in terms of uh, building companies. So we have this uh, bunch of experts, uh, different domain areas like sales, marketing, product, finance, and then provide all those solutions for growth for the startups. So as a company, as an early stage private technology company, you come to us and you benefit from this whole infrastructure, like having the specific solutions, what to focus on, what the team needs to execute, and then you... Uh, you know, ask for mentors and we attract a good high quality experts and mentors for your company. And then, yeah, when you need a round, then we can make introductions to our uh, partner venture capital firms. And then we join the round and follow if uh, some of the VC firms uh, makes a decision to lead the round. Oh, fantastic. And do you have any um, industry or uh, geography limitations to what you guys can invest in? Historically, it's been mostly United States and Europe. Uh, we're now fascinated about Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, those startup ecosystems are growing rapidly. I think Dubai is also taking certain steps, um, you know, in terms of, you know, developing those digital technologies and bringing in, you know, new tech, new teams and entrepreneurs to the world. Israel is super strong, uh, things like cyber, Digital health have a great, you know, background and great teams uh, coming out of Israel. Um, so those are historically the geographies that we've been working with. So the idea is when we meet, you know, a good team in the region that is able to represent, you know, the idea of how we work with the startups in the region, provide value-added services. We're pretty open and collaborative. Excellent. So we are also follow-on investors as well as you guys. So we do have a preference of people coming in who already have a lead or have a hard commitment for a lead, do you guys require that stage before they meet you? Well, uh, no, we actually engage with the startups early, start working with the startups, and then we make introductions typically. So to be able to get into the round, uh, we typically source company, we build relationship with the entrepreneurs. As I said, we engage early on with the founders, provide this actionable advice, uh, give expertise, uh, you know, bring in experts and mentors to the board of the company, work with the team. And then as it takes time to build the trust, then we say, okay, now it's a good timing. You are ready for the venture round. Let's, you know, get in touch with the several venture capital firms. Then we make introductions to those venture capital firms. And then if the firm decides to invest, we join. So, so the idea is to help entrepreneurs in the first place to make entrepreneur a hero, if you will, in the ecosystem and provide also all sorts of services, you know, tools for those teams to be successful. That is excellent. Uh, that, that is fantastic. And of course, by doing this show, you are also making yourself more accessible and providing insights and information 
to help Lovely. you along as well. So that's uh, yeah, it's a honor and a privilege for me to be with you, Sydney. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's great. I know that you have had um, such a long and interesting history um, in startup and investment because you've been you've moved here a, a long time ago from Europe. And so, um, how have your journey? What has really brought you to to this kind of a journey in startup investment? How did you get into it, and why did you make that leap over to Silicon Valley? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a great question. So I started out of my college. It's called Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology (MIPT). It's like MIT of Russia. <laughs> I was back in 2000 uh, something, 2001, 2002, and at that time Intel was super active in Eastern Europe. So I joined uh, the president of Intel, uh, the team of uh, Intel uh, Central Eastern Europe, and then I basically moved into the uh, to the Bay Area for uh, you know working with the startups here. We started several programs with Berkeley. We did so-called Intel Berkeley Technology Entrepreneurship Challenge or Global Startup Challenge that was initiated by Intel and Berkeley. That's how I met with Steve Blank here in the Silicon Valley. You know, we started, you know, discussing different ideas. I went through Lean Launchpad uh, sessions with the Stanford Graduate School of Business uh, together with Steve. Um, so that's, uh, that's my history. So Intel actually brought me to the Silicon Valley uh, when I was working with Intel Capital. That's an investment fund, uh, an, an investment arm of Intel Capital. That is so interesting. And so then you've just moved uh, to to different funds and different startups and different mentorship opportunities while you were in the Valley. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then a couple guys from the same college, uh, they just sold their company in the United States. It's called iLita Software. Uh, and then uh, they came to me and said, Nick, you are from the same college. It's pretty much like Stanford here. And my IPT is kind of very close network. Yeah. So the guys uh, came to me and said, look, we're thinking about starting a venture capital firm. Let's do it together. So I basically was on transition from Intel Capital to start ABRT. And that was back in 2006. So it's been almost 15 years as we've been working on this. And I find this journey fascinating. That's so funny. So, I mean, I, when I used to live in the Valley and then came back, I get this question constantly that I'm sure you get as well, which is, if you're a startup fundraising, do you have to move to the Valley? What do you answer to these startups that probably ask you this all the time? Well, yes and no. Well, yes and no. So the idea is, uh, I, I do have a number of very successful companies based out of uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, in their early days, uh, they raised the funding. At the same time, I have very successful companies based in Europe or, you know, some other places of the world, uh, like, again, with r and in St. Petersburg, for example, that got to the expansion stage level, and they got super interesting for, they got to the certain level when, uh, you know, even the Silicon Valley venture capital firms got interested in them. For example, one of the companies that uh, my co-founders have been working on called Veeam Software, so for example, Sequoia Capital got interested in the company, though the company is based, uh, you know, on the East Coast mostly and has little operations here in the Silicon Valley. But at the same time, at the expansion stage, even local funds get interested in finding those companies. So uh, if it's an early stage deal, then probably, yes, the company has to be established here in the Silicon Valley to be able to successfully raise seed funding, for example. If it's an expansion stage like Series A+, plus, Series B rounds, then it can be a company from, I don't know, from France, for example, or from Germany or from Moscow. And uh, this company would still be successful in raising capital with uh, the leading Silicon Valley funds. That's excellent. And, and so if you had, if you like knew of this company that was just moving there on day one to start raising, what would your advice be? What kind of tips would you give them to meet people and how would you network in Silicon Valley? Because I remember living there. It's like a whole se separate world from the rest of the world. But, uh, but how would you describe it? Uh, I, 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 I do feel that uh, entrepreneurs and the main job of the founder and the CEO of the company is to focus on the business in the first place. Uh, lots of companies pay, spend enormous effort and time on the fundraising. So that's, that takes lots of founders time, right? Yeah. So the more company is able to focus on actually building the business, getting to the certain point when it gets market traction, when it gets new customers, when the revenues are growing, and then it becomes an interesting opportunity, which is fundable and has great capital efficiency. Then you basically have a number of venture capital firms coming into you and saying, look, uh, we've been, you know, discovering, you know, want to, you know, learn more about your business. Maybe we would be interested in investing in the company. And when the company shows traction consistently 
over a certain period of time, then those investors basically, you know, line up and say, take my money. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that an interesting catch 22 that we have in our, in our industry, like often and all the time is you get money or you get offered money when you're not looking for it. Yeah, exactly. And so now, thank you, Nick. And I wanted to do, play a little game with you. Um, so then we can get to know you a little bit better. So I asked you to take out two pieces of paper and I believe you have napkins. Yes, okay. I do. As long as they're two separate ones, then that's fine. So um, on each of them, I just wanted you to write one thing that is true and one thing that is false about yourself that uh, then we can guess. And then I'm going to do the same and then see if you can guess mine. Yep, done. Okay. So I'm going to show you mine first so then you kind of see how it works. So I'm going to show you these one at a time. One is I did my master's in France. Okay. And the one is. I used to live in Japan. So which one of these do you think is true and which one is false? Oh, wow, that's nice. Japan sounds good to me. <laughs> do you think this is true or do you think this is false? I think you, you might have lived in Japan for, for, for a while. No, that's wrong. No. Okay. So I did so my master's, did master's in, France. in France. And I okay. never lived in Japan, but I've always wanted to go. I've only been to the airport. Um, very nice airport though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I so, always wanted to go there. Really? I can't admire people, yeah. Maybe you'll <laughs> so, open an office there. Maybe that's your <laughs> exactly, next place. Exactly. <laughs> they are known for being high tech, so. Um, now let's see yours. Okay. Uh, lived in the plane. In the plane, Okay. Yeah. And then the other one is? Invested in Skype. You invested in Skype or lived? What does lived in a plane mean? Does it mean like more than a day? Uh, yeah, like being uh, very often in a plane. Oh, okay. Um, I'm kind of hoping one of them is okay. I'm I'm hoping that the Skype one is true. Did you invest in Skype? <laughs> Our very good partners did that. Uh, Mangrove Capital. It's a European fund. We have a joint uh, history of investing together, and it's all started when the guys invested in Skype, and we got interested in working with them. So. Since that, we made more than 15 investments uh, together in a number of companies right now working on a joint fund. So I did not invest in Skype, but I'm a part of the team oh, which invested in Skype. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So we both lost the game, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did get to know a little bit more about each other. And lastly, I would love for you to share an initiative or a platform or a startup that you are very excited about with our audience. Yeah, sure, sure. So that all comes back to the vision of providing the most, you know, all the available resources for the entrepreneurs to be able to grow their companies. So uh, we first, as I said, started doing programs here, brought a lot of mentors and experts from the Silicon Valley. And then at a certain point of time, we realized, okay, so we, we, we have all that expertise and all the solutions for the entrepreneurs to be able to grow their companies. How do we make them available for the entrepreneurs? So that's that's how we started creating this digital platform that uh, today we use for sourcing startups, for scoring them, for providing a level up for the teams, for connecting with the investors. And the vision is pretty simple. Yeah, I'm really passionate about to be able to more capitalize these innovation economies. We have great opportunities today and more and more private companies and startups on the market these days, it's extremely, you know, it's a low cost, low barrier to entry. We have exponential technologies and more and more companies being created today. Um, so yeah, the idea is to bring in more capital uh, because still this uh, venture industry is pretty small. Uh, so this year it was 200 to 50 billion, this overall, uh, you know, size of the venture industry. And there's a private capital on the management through the pandemics where a couple trillion. So it was 6.5 before, uh, and uh, today it's almost 8.5. So it's a huge you know, amount of wealth. This exponential wealth has to be available for the companies, for the startups, as well as with other resources like mentors, experts and everything. Uh, so that's, uh, that's how we uh, create this uh, ecosystem and create a digital platform to be able to track and identify the most interesting investment opportunities and make them available for the private capital to capitalize the innovation economy. Excellent. And where can startups and investors uh, find this and find you? Oh, yeah, it's abrt.vc. So it's pretty simple, abrt.vc. It's about our company, about our offerings. And yeah, we would be happy to get in touch and to work with you guys to help you build your next company or invest in interesting and promising startups. 
Perfect. And guys, we're going to link this in the description below. So be sure to check, uh, check it out and be sure to go and contact Nick and uh, send him all of your great innovations as well as partnership deals. So thank you so much for joining Nick and uh, we wish you a great uh, successful in your investments ahead. Thank you so much, Sydney. Thank you. Thank you guys. It was very good seeing you Bye. and being in this interview.